Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining today. This is your host Nino inviting you to somewhat of a distraction if related to our usual topic of late, which is eccentric operating systems. And today's topic shall instead concern the Simple X Secure Messenger. Now, after the arrest of the Telegram founder in France, there has been a spike of interest in alternatives to Telegram, with people realizing, perhaps, that the best legal defense against disclosure requests is if you do not actually have who knows what data to disclose, and that the run of jurisdictions and that factual difficulties in providing user data are protective only in so far as nobody truly escalates things on the legal front, and that when they do, <laughs> you simply wish they didn't have anything about you to disclose. So that looked interesting and I had a bit of a view of it. It is available for all sorts of major platforms, like certainly iOS, as you can see here, but also Android, Windows, Macintosh, Linux, and the desktop operating systems even seem to have two varieties, a command line version and a graphical desktop client. So that sounded intriguing to say the least. And I went ahead and installed it. Things were pretty straightforward. And now I could be chatting here with my Linux machine. I created two instances of Simple X, one on my Ubuntu laptop. But if you have Macintosh or Windows, things will be rather similar and one on iOS. So here under simplex.chat, haha, like simplex, <laughs> you find the general website of this messenger and you are being redirected to GitHub for the binaries. And you can see here, I have scrolled down to the assets of the release and yeah, here we are having stuff for Android, stuff for Mac OS. I, of course, was interested in the Ubuntu version, but it continues onwards to Windows and the desktop versions and so on and so forth. Now, being curious, I went ahead for a command line version. And when I started up, then that's what it looks like. And I can send message messages here. I can say at Typex. I called my instances Enigma and Typex for the coding machines of the Germans and the British in the Second World War, respectively. Uh, so at Typex, hello there. And tada, I got it here on my iPhone. I'm not sure you can see that. Yeah, now you should be able to see that. So yeah, I can reply. Funnily. And punk, I got that there. So a very cool form of chat, somewhat reminiscent of IRC or ancient ICQ for Unixoids in the beginning of the 2000s, this chat looked extremely charming to me. Like, I love this. I admit that wholeheartedly. But that was not all, for apparently it seems to be entirely possible to send files. You can actually have the one instance sent a file to the other. And as I was looking for the various options of the command line interface, it turned out that it is even possible to send and receive files automatically. Well, that of course 
offers an interesting possibility as it gives you immediately the opportunity to script this and therefore create a sort of batch-oriented shell. So the whole thing is, of course, non-interactive in so far as you are sending commands which are then being scripted and the result is reported to you, but you do not get to edit things in VI or something. But the sending and receiving of commands itself, as in a script like that, makes it possible to command my Ubuntu machine simply by sending little scripts here over my iOS machine. And this is what it would look like. It's just simply a bash script of most simple nature. You see out up there, user bin bash. And all you see here on my screen with a ridiculously decreased resolution, so it looks like a Hollywood interface. Uh, <laughs> you see here simply an eternal repetition, so a loop in which, first of all, text files and doc files are being deleted. Then I would like to get all files which, which I am receiving here and they shall be text files and doc files because these are file types with which iOS is operating comparatively easily, being otherwise quite capricious in what you can open where. But with text and doc files, you're pretty safe. So first get the text files. Then if the text file that you got is not empty, execute it as a script. This is this bash line here and pipe the result to result.doc. And if result.doc is not empty, then please send a reply to the iPhone. And that we shall now explore more in practice. So I called this thing, haha, the file shell. And as we are starting it, you see there, there is nothing right now. So it tells us, okay, didn't read anything. But let's now send a command. And to this end, you know, I just opened my text editor and I created here three text files called uh, ls, ps, and date. These are simply three very well known commands that do nothing special but just ask for something and get a reply. And these commands we can now send over via the simple X messenger. So attach choose a file and I would like to send ls. What files are there in the directory? I send ls, it picks it up and replies to me with result.doc. And result.doc, I can then open uh, via AO office, yeah, yeah, whatever. And I get a directory listing. So as you can see, the command executed successfully and reported me its result. Cute, I think. And why not continue? So again, choose a file. I want to send this time the question on the date. I'm sending the date. And again, I am receiving a result doc. Uh, where are you? Here you are. And the date is Pa today or from your perspective, when I publish this video, very likely yesterday. <laughs> or I could ask for the running processes and I can send PS. You get the hang of this, right? Like <laughs> you just send whatever you want 
to have executed and it will report back with whatever there can be piped as output. And yes, this thing has no safeguards against letting it hang or somehow else malfunction. This is just like a proof of concept execution. But this facility to automatically get files and launch them into scripts is of course exceedingly charming and makes it possible from here to do all kinds of things. I could transform files via ASCII and then transform them back into binary and trigger their operation and then transfer that way programs to the target machine and execute them there and so on and so forth. So this little facility already allows for an interesting fashion to remote control one's machines from elsewhere. If one were extreme, one could even send a relayed message where what you are doing is the command to send via simplex a completely different message to a completely different person. And that way you could even chain simplex messages, not unlike ancient Unix to Unix copy. But I digress. I believe today's demonstration was hopefully clear in and of itself and of course I hope you enjoyed it. And with that I hope to greet you here soon again and thank you for joining today. If not a subscriber yet please consider joining our friendly community. See you soon and until then have a wonderful time. Thank you for watching and from me goodbye.